Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Affirmative, Dave. I read you. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm a fan of home automation. So in this project video, I'm going to create a Google Home Mini using a Raspberry Pi, but I'm going to make it look like the HAL 9000 from the science fiction movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. To start things off, I've gathered some of the materials and components that I think I'm going to need to make this build. Obviously, we're going to need a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi Model 3, but if you're planning on doing this and you have a different one, I'm sure it's going to work just fine. Now, in order to talk to the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to use a USB microphone. This is just a little cheap USB dongle that plugs into the USB port and it becomes a microphone. To listen back for responses from the Raspberry Pi, my original plan was to use a 3-inch speaker and a Class D amplifier, but the coronavirus has made it kind of hard to source some of these components in time for this project. So for now, I'm just going to leave the 3.5 millimeter audio jack exposed and I'm going to plug in external speakers. Hopefully in the future I'll be able to buy that speaker and the amplifier and replace this external solution. But for now we're just going to go with external speakers. If you're familiar with the HAL 9000, you'll know that it has kind of an iconic plastic dome looking thing and a little red light in the middle. I had trouble at first trying to find a little plastic dome, but I got a good tip from a puppeteer friend of mine named Austin and he said to look on eBay for a little miniature cupcake containers and these are just little plastic containers that hold cupcakes I guess um, but it'll work perfect for that plastic dome on the HAL 9000. And of course we need the iconic little red light. I'm just going to use a simple LED. I've got a couple of different sizes here. I've got a 10 millimeter, a 5 millimeter, and even a three millimeter. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna go with the 10 millimeter. It's the biggest one, it'll be easiest to see. I think the three millimeter is just gonna to be too small. But I kinda of wanna make sure that it looks to scale, so we'll see which one looks better, the 10 millimeter or the five millimeter. And finally, as I've done a little bit more research on this project, I think I wanna activate the Google Home by pressing a button rather than saying the activation word. So I'm gonna use a little momentary switch for that. Now that I've gathered all the components, it's time to install Google Assistant on the Raspberry Pi. So I did a quick search on the internet and found a really good tutorial on how to do this. As I was searching through these tutorials, it seems like Google API has changed the way they've done things over time, so many of the tutorials I found were outdated, but I did find an up-to-date one that was written just a couple of months ago and it seems like it's going to work, so I'm going to go ahead and follow that. I'll leave a link to this tutorial down in the description. Okay, so I've got the Google Assistant installed and I've got it working. Um, what I ended up doing was using a push button connected to one of the GPIOs to act as if it was pressing the enter button and that initiates a query for the Google Assistant. So if I want to ask the weather, I just hit the button. What is the weather going to be like today? There will be showers there today with a forecasted high of 57 and a low of 22 degrees Fahrenheit. So there you go. I can ask it any question and it will respond just like a Google Home. The next step will be putting all these electronics into an enclosure. My plan is to use Fusion 360 to design a 3D printable case that looks like the HAL 9000. So I'll go ahead and jump on the computer and start that design. At this point, I finished designing the 3D printed enclosure and I went ahead and printed out all those parts. This took quite a bit of time. The next step was to assemble all of these components. I captured the whole assembly process on a YouTube live stream. If you want to support what I do here and get access to early release videos, behind the scenes content, live streams like assembling this project, and monthly Google Hangouts, consider becoming a Bite Size supporting member by either visiting patreon.com forward slash bite size or clicking the join button right here on YouTube. It's a great way for me to connect with you on a more personal level and it really helps me out a lot.
So I've got these two springs that I'm going to use to put underneath the button so that it has a lot more spring back force. But the problem is they're too long, so I'm going to go ahead and use the Dremel to cut them in half. My original enclosure was actually a little bit bigger than this, but I ended up reducing the size so that I could fit the enclosure on my 3D printing bed. One of the downsides to making that decision is that I no longer have enough room to plug in the USB and the audio jack. Now, the audio jack is a simple solution because I can just get a right angle audio jack like this and plug it in and that takes care of it. But the USB is gonna be a little bit more tricky. After a bunch of considerations and some research, I figured out that I can actually power the Raspberry Pi using some test points on the backside. So I'm gonna take this USB cable and chop off the end and solder the wires directly under the Raspberry Pi. Okay, Hal, what's the weather like today? It'll be mostly cloudy there today, with a forecasted high of 54 and a low of 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now, it's 54 and mostly sunny. Tell me a joke. Why shouldn't you write with a broken pencil? Because it's pointless. Can you talk like Hal 9000? Yes, Hal had some anger management issues. Can you talk like Hal 9000? I like David much more than H.A.L. I can't believe he didn't say, OK Google, once during that entire movie. OK Hal, open the pod bay doors. I can't do that, but there's a spare key under the flower pot outside the pod bay airlock. You can let yourself in. So that pretty much wraps up this video. If this is the first bite-sized video you've watched, you may not know that I make a lot of other cool project videos like this. I'll go ahead and post a couple of those here for you to watch. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. My name is Zach, and I'll see you on the next one.